Good morning, guys. Is it? Yeah, it's still morning, so it's 1030. So this video is going to be kind of all over the map. So if it's too noisy, if the background's too much for you, you'll just have to swipe on by. So I'm going to show you a couple things first. I, I am making uh, Cammie's recipe, but Cammie uh, from Last Day of Normal is the name of her channel. Go look at her stuff. It's pretty interesting. She's very smart. Um, anyway, she we did a video together, a uh, live stream with Nia's Way this week, and she talked about making scrambled eggs and whatever type of meat you want, and you could can that. And I've canned everything under the sun. I've never done that. So I'm like, oh, I'm doing that. Uh, problem was, I, I have no jars left. I have thousands of jars that are full. And so I had to buy some new ones. So what I am going to do is scrambled eggs. It's going to have deer meat, deer burger, and then ribeye fat bites is what I'm using in mine. So I'll go over a little bit of that, but I'm going to show you what the cooked product looks like. All right, so that is 18 scrambled eggs. That's going to be with some tallow, some of that deer burger, and then the ribeye fat. The other thing that I'll show you is this is how I get my jars and the rings or the, the lids um, warmed up. This is very warm water. I do that ahead of time because of that waxy seal that's on top of those lids. That's how you get them to conform to seal on your um, on your jars. So I'll go out and show you part of the process of getting the um, uh, pressure canner started. My husband's out mowing, so it's very loud. So I'm trying to hope he's out of the garage at this point because he started the mower in there and about killed me with the exhaust fumes. And I still hear it, so hopefully he's there. I think I, yay, okay, he's out. So this is what I'll show you. So let me see if I can turn this around for you. All right. So this is my canner. It has been used to death. This is my pressure canner. So I'll show you underneath there. You can see the flame. So this is a turkey fryer base that we of course have LP. I try not to show you everything in here. Um, and we'll get that up to temp. I did put filtered water in here, but we have extremely hard water. So I also put uh, some white vinegar to keep it from chalking up the side of my jars. I'll show you the lid. So this will be the lid that you put on beans that I did last time. What I will do is I'll get this up to temp, put the jars in, and then what we do at that point is we allow this to come up to temp and you'll actually see it shooting a steam stream out of there. You're supposed to let it do that for 10 minutes. And then this is a 15 PSI weight that I'll come in and just put down on top of there. Um, and then once it starts to rattle, you start counting your time. So for pints, it's 75 minutes. So an hour and 15 minutes is what you will do for pints. If you're gonna do quarts of any sort of thing, any low acid food, so eggs, meat, green beans, things like that, that would be um, an hour and a half for quarts and an hour and 15 minutes for pints, no matter what the food is, if it is a low acid food. So I'm gonna try not to burn myself. Last time I did this, I tried to do it on video and I fried my hand, which was okay, because I use tallow lotion and I put that on that burn. And within three days, you couldn't even tell I had burned it. And it was a second degree burn. So I thought that was pretty good. So now I'll put you guys up in my little holder so that you guys can watch how I filled the jars up, okay? I don't want it locked. Huh. Well, it's not going to let me do it sideways, so I know this is going to look funny on computer and on TV, but this is the only way it's going to let me do it. So, all right, I will show you guys. Okay. So, the next thing you do is you take out your warmed jars. These are brand new. They've been washed, dried, and then I just set them down in the hot water. So I always get a nice little food funnel. You can see how big the opening is there. 
And then I will start filling it. The recipes that I found on this said to do like a third of the jar because the eggs will um, kind of that's probably more than a third so the next one I won't do quite that full it just seems like a third I was like geesh that won't be enough for me to eat but if you're starving it will be I'm gonna do just a little more this is trial and error if you put too much in you will know because your lids will bulge I think this should be okay. I think a lot of that has to do with it'll thin down. Now, I am histamine. Um, I have histamine response issues with like chicken, turkey, and egg whites, things like that. So, um, this does have both because I am only making these for if we absolutely need something if something happens so um, so this does have both the egg white and the egg yolk gosh darn it I'm gonna make a mess I may have to do an extra jar which is okay my canner my pressure canner um, will do several uh, jars Hopefully everybody's having a nice Saturday. Our weather here is perfect. Um, and as I said, it says that when these cook that they will expand. Um, so I don't want to over cook it. some of that ribeye fat will help. Now some recipes also said you could add some water to this. I'm not going to do that with this one because I did put that extra ribeye fat in there. Just gonna get one more jar ready. It was one that I had made uh, bone broth put in, so I'm gonna get it up to temp. And then I will, it looks like, have some leftovers, so my husband can have this tomorrow for breakfast. Another thing I recommend is having plenty of your lids, lids and rings. Um, I take the rings off so this is your lid I take the rings off after they have sealed and they've cooled completely because if you don't then sometimes you get a little rust formation due to hard hard water food things like that getting in so we'll do seven and then the rest we'll put towards his breakfast tomorrow all right Okay, the next thing I always recommend doing is you want to take and you want to make sure that the rim of your jar is clean. Um, if you're doing something that's really oily, like a bone broth, you want to take a paper towel with some um, either apple cider vinegar or some white vinegar, and you just want to make sure and get cut through any greasy. When you use a food funnel, it shouldn't get in there, but I've had it do it before, so. Okay, and then I just throw my lids on. This is so simple, um, and I know some people are kind of worried about the, the pressure canner. I have an old style pressure canner, and I have the newer style, and I've never had anything happen with any of those. I don't know why I wipe the water off, but I do. Um, and if you reuse your lids, and sometimes you can, I, I'm kind of chicken to do it, but I have, if you reuse your lids, 
if you've wrote on there with like a uh, magic marker, you can take rubbing alcohol on like a piece of cotton or a Q-tip and you will completely be able to get that off of there just in case you're reusing anything. Let's see, I'm gonna just see some comments here. Aw, well I'm glad. Hi Renee. Yeah, TT, well that's the, the thing is I want people to be as self-sustainable as possible. Um, you know, things are kind of crazy. I did salt um, the eggs and the burger while they were cooking. Now, when I tighten mine, I don't tighten them down so tight that I can't get them back off, but you don't want them loose. There is kind of a little middle ground that you want these to be at. I'll show you, um, I'll show me putting some of these in the water and then I will show you the finished product when they're done. Nobody wants to be on here for an hour and 15 minutes with me. I'm kind of boring. Okay. Another thing that I recommend you have is these little things here to pick up the jars out of your processor. So another thing is when you are done using a pressure canner and you've gotten to your hour and 15 or your hour and a half, depending what your time is, just turn the uh, flame off to that area and then just walk away and leave it alone. I would not mess with it at all um, for probably an hour, 15, hour and a half. Just let it completely cool and, and come down. Then I always take that little bubbler off the top, the weight, to make sure that there's no steam still coming out. If there is, I put it right back on and walk away for longer. So this is something that you can do other things, but you need to be home to be available to do that. But once you do that, then all you do is you take these out, you put them back in this little, I use this just to carry stuff in. You'll do that. And then um, you can bring them in and I have a bunch of hot pads and stuff that I set out in our dining room on the table. I just set them there and you let them, you know, you'll hear them seal. And you'll just hear a little ping and then you know that your seal is good. I do check every single seal even after 24 hours. If any of your jars do not seal, put them in the refrigerator and know that you're going to be eating scrambled eggs and deer and ribeye fat bites in the near future. So, um, but if they seal, they're good. Um, everything online says they're good for six months. I'm, I can things and eat things that are 10 years old. Just going to throw that out there. You have to do what you feel is safest for you. Your nose is going to tell you how it is. If you can't smell, if you have an issue from, you know, the virus that messed with your uh, smelling ability, I suggest getting you some zinc lozenges and put them up here buccally next to your, in between your cheeks and your gums and doing that every single day for about a week so that you can fix that trigeminy nerve tape thing in there and, and get your smeller back. If you have something else that caused you to lose your sense of smell, uh, ask somebody else in the house. So, all right, let's go out and we'll get this put in the canner. I'll look at your mess, your stuff there. Okay, let me pick this up one-handed carefully. My cats are super happy. They're on the back porch in the sun, so they're ready for summer. going to have to go in and get a little more water. I'm going to add to that and then I will get the lid on and I'm not going to do it with on live of putting the lid on because sometimes it does not work. I mean it takes you about 16 tries to get it and nobody wants to see me cursing so we just won't go there. Take my water out. Oh, hopefully the connection came back. You know, we're on uh, high speed fiber internet here in the great state of Illinois, so it's supposed to work well, but you know that doesn't always happen. 
think I'm going to do one more glass. Let's see. Uh, so for anything frozen, I would say about a year. I, I used to freeze some bone broth, but now I just can bone broth as well. So, and then it's going to be seals really good for what, what I've been doing. And as I said last night, I still have my appendix. So if you get into food, drink, anything that's a little uh, not well, has some extra bacteria, that's the whole reason we have an appendix. So, add this. <laughs> okay, that looks good. I'll show you kind of, see how far up the jars. It's about three quarters of the way up. Not sure if you can see. There we go. So it's about three quarters of the way up the jars. And then, like I said, I will throw uh, the lid on here in a minute and get that started. And then when they are done, I will come back on here. Dang, it's nice out. I need to be outside doing something. Shooting rabbits, that's what I should be doing. Anyway, when they are done, and I've taken them out. I will take pictures and I will put it back up on here as well. So, uh, what causes appendicitis? Well, we don't use our appendix. It's kind of the same thing with the gallbladder. If you're not using an organ that is meant to be used, things sit there and, you know, they just lay there, get dormant, get weak, and they go bad. It's the same thing that can happen to a gallbladder. Um, happens to the gallbladder. Gallbladder. There are viruses that you can get and bacteria that you can get in your body that will also, you know, it's going to pick the weakest spot to go to. So that could be what causes it. Um, another thing is some people, if they're real heavy drinkers, they can get pancreatitis. It goes into appendicitis. So, I mean, there's different things. And I think there are some families that have some genetic issues that can cause that to happen more often. So, yes. Yep, I will definitely show you guys. Um, yes, yeah, to see if they take, keep their taste. Renee was saying, I want to see you taste them after, see if they keep their taste. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know, Renee. People get everything removed so early, and it's not their fault. Um but like I was saying last night, you know, I remember being in a patient's room and they they didn't have infection. They just, their gallbladder was mad because they had a bunch of stones and it had sludge built up because they were on a high carb diet. Well, you don't need bile to break that down. You do for protein and fat. And the doc's like, well, we'll just rip it out and we'll rip your appendix out while we're there. They're not necessary. And I'm like, we need to have a talk. And we went out in the hallway and I was like, what is going on? I'm like, you're telling me God put all these organs in us and man, we don't really need them. You know, it's not cancerous. It wasn't gangrenous. It wasn't getting ready to blow up on the guy. And I'm just like, there's something wrong with this. And luckily um, we had two surgeons and they disagreed. The other one wanted to do antibiotics and see if they could get everything to kind of calm down in there. And they put him NPO, which means nothing to eat. So he was fasted. Um, I think four days, put an NG tube down, which pulls up any of the stomach acid and stuff that's happening in the stomach when you're not eating to that degree and you're sick already. And you got to keep it. You got to keep them both, actually. So that works out. Yeah, 19. The good thing is your body does kind of learn to go around that. If you're doing carnivore, then you've your body has been very smart and found a way to go around it. So... Yeah. Yeah, I am a patient advocate, TT, um, 100% of the time, even if it costs me my job, which I've never had it cost me my job. Um, there's a scope of practice that a nurse is working under, um, and advocacy is like number two. So I'm not worried about it. And even if I did, uh, I, I've been fired for less. Uh, only one time have I ever been fired in my life and they had to give us our jobs back when they figured out that the thing wasn't working so other than that that is what it is let's see that's wonderful some people um, doing carnivore without a gallbladder do have some trouble so i always tell them if you're having trouble you can do ox bile salts 
for about a month or two is what I've seen some of my people do. There was one that had to do, I can't remember if it was hydrogen bromide. There's another one that helped with like some of the gastric, gastric bypass people to kind of help break down the fats and the proteins, but I'll have to look that one up. So yeah. Yes, you definitely adjusted. You're 62. Wow. Good for you. Perfect. Okay. Well, I'm going to get off here, get the lid on there and get everything started. And then, like I said, as soon as it's done, I will come back on here. I may do another uh, live video in a little bit because I did get a lamb leg roast without the bone. Never done that before. So I've had lamb chops, but I've never done that. So I'm going to wing it and see what we do. So I may do that here in a little bit as well. So if you guys want to watch, that'd be great. If you like this content, share it out. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. Um, and I always try to, like, if I get a recipe, I always try to give credit where credit has come from, you know, where somebody else's idea. So I do appreciate that. So, oh, that's okay, Renee. I'm going outside too before I come back to do anything like that. So it'll be a little bit, but you guys have a wonderful day. And I will see you in a little bit. And as I always say, meet, heat, eat, and repeat.